Sarah Dew, and you're watching Brockton Community Access. That's true news coming to you. With the current epidemic, many people are left full of fear, uninformed, and lacking essential products to get through COVID-19. Today, I'll provide simple tips and advice to help keep you and your surrounding peers informed and safe. Since the CDC released an advisory, there's been a rush on produce, toilet paper, and cleaning supplies. Although stores are still open, people have been panic buying items in bulk to be prepared for the unknowing months to come. If you find yourself without cleaning supplies, there are a few products you can use to disinfect your hands in high touch places in your home. The first mixture is homemade hand sanitizer. All you need is aloe vera gel, isopropyl alcohol, and essential oils. With these simple products easily found at your home or any drugstore, you can make homemade hand sanitizer. These products are great substitutes and are key to keeping ourselves safe. In these overwhelming times, it's common to feel frightened or overwhelmed with negativity. But if we all act accordingly and follow the guidelines, we can get through this epidemic together. Today I have Dr. Pennato from Signature Healthcare and he's going to give us some tips and advice on COVID-19. Good afternoon. Hi, I thank you so much for being here with me today. I know that you are very busy and things are very hectic at Signature Health. So I just want to start off by asking, what do you recommend that people do before coming into the hospital to keep the amount of people coming in and out at a minimum? So what we've been seeing is that a lot of patients don't realize that they're contagious before they come to the hospital. So what we've been really encouraging patients to do is if you're not sure what you should do, you should call your primary care physician. Um, here at Signature Healthcare, our office is open, you know, business hours, and we have people on call 24 seven to take phone calls like that to help give people guidance as to if their problem warrants going to the emergency room immediately or calling their primary care the next day to be seen in the office or even bringing people in the same day for an evaluation. Right, correct. So that's really smart. So we know that Brockton is one of the highest, has one of the highest cases in mass. Why do you believe we have so many cases and what do you recommend to minimize the rates? My sense is that a lot of the, the increase in the cases is based on the density. So Brockton has a very high population density and yeah. a lot of times when patients yeah. get exposed to the virus, they don't know that yeah. they've had it and they continue to spread it just through their normal day-to-day -day activities. So I think what's happened in Brockton is we had an exposure that started weeks ago and before people realized how significant it was the virus spread through the community. So really the key thing to halt the spread of it, our social distancing, which we've seen a lot of the news, which is yes. try to stay home yes. as much as you can, stay six feet away from people when you're out in public, wear a mask at all times out in public if you can't stay more than six feet away from people. Uh, and the key thing to protect yourselves is really to wash your hands. If you come in yeah. contact with a virus in the community, the best way to prevent yourself from getting sick with this is to make sure you wash your hands because the key yeah. transmission is if you touch your face after you've touched something. That's very true. And because of all these um, cases, doctors are actually more at risk because of all the patients coming in. So do you have any recommendations for doctors or nurses or volunteers to do to ensure their safety? So, I mean, as healthcare providers, we're being extra cautious in the workplace, but a lot of times we're just as at risk at home, so it's really yeah. limiting the contact with other people. In our office, we're spending a lot of time identifying the patients who might be sick, and we have certain designated areas where if you are a potential case of COVID-19, we're sending you to get tested there to make sure that healthcare workers have all the appropriate PPE to take care of you. Mm, yes. But... Um, so I know that things are very overwhelming right now and there's, you know, people are watching false news and reading fake statistics. You know, there's a lot of, you know, fake news. What, what advice can you give in regards to following the right facts? Like, you know, true facts. Um, as far as true facts, I guess it really depends on what questions people really have about it. If you're worried about your own individual care, you know, the key thing is to ask your physician because they're going to know what your other medical problems are, how at risk you are, what the other people in your family are. As far as the community, I will say, you know, as a physician, I, my office is in the Bridgewater area. 
and we have a good idea of how many cases there are going around out here. So the primary care office has a lot of good resources to call um, to find out like what's going on in your area to get the best information. I agree in the times we live in now, it's hard to find out what the most accurate is. Yes. So you really yes. have to try to concentrate on local information in your community. That's very true. Have you seen um, a drop in cases? Have you seen a rise in cases in the past couple of weeks? I guess what I have seen is at the hospital level, we've seen a downtrend in the number of cases requiring patients to end up in the hospital. Um, so a lot of the sicker patients are getting better and being discharged home. I've seen a, a higher number of cases mainly because we have more testing. We have increased access to testing, so we're able to diagnose more people. I don't get the sense that there's more people who are actually sick nowadays, just we have more tests available so we can actually yeah. get them tested. Yes. About a month ago, we were really struggling because we didn't have access to testing, so we had people on the phone who we thought were sick and probably had the virus, but we're telling them, you can't test just to stay home. So we're seeing more, which is probably a good thing because we have the yeah. ability to identify who the people are that are sick. So for testing, are you guys having people come into the hospital? Is it like a drive-by service? Because I've seen def different ways to do the testing. So how do you guys do your testing at Signature Health? So it's so, yeah. So in my office in Bridgewater, we have done no tests because we've oh, decided okay. as an organization to keep the healthcare providers safe. We were going to consolidate all the testing. So probably there are two options for our Signature uh, patients and employees. One is at our 110 Liberty Street, we have testing for our patients who we've identified that are sick and actively ill, and we arranged for the schedule to get them tested. And then as of today, they open a new um, collaborative site over at the Brockton High School. Uh, Signature yeah. Healthcare and Brockton yeah. Neighborhood Health have collaborated with some state um, donated tests to get wow. kind of more people yeah. tested there. Um, so depending on which category you, you fall into, there are different categories for people who are actively sick versus healthcare workers, et cetera, we have different sites to get you tested. Um, but it's, you know, by appointment, you know, drive up, you've already been screened, they reach in the window, swab you, et cetera. Okay, wow. So when, with the stay-at-home advisory, when it does lift, can you give any, like, advice to, on, how, sorry, let me just rephrase that. With the stay-at-home advisory, um, when it does lift, do you have any advice for people on how to live a regular life, but also stay safe. Yeah, so when, when they talk about the lifting of the advisory, it's not going to be a open the shades and everything yeah. back to normal. <laughs> We're gonna have rolling, so there's gonna be different criteria. So it's gonna to have to be paying attention to what's being lifted and understanding kind of what your risk category is. For older people with other medical problems, they still need to be exceedingly cautious because although, the advisory is lifting, they're still at risk for getting sick. And the mm -hmm. key thing with the advisory was now that it's lifting, what that really means is that the hospital can take care of you if you get sick. Mm. Before, the advisory was put out because we were concerned that if you got sick and the hospital was full, what were we going to do? Right. There's still going to be people getting sick with COVID-19 for months come, going forward. So if you have other medical problems, you have to really pay attention to, okay, is it safe for me to be going out? and understanding like what your risk stratification is. If you're young and healthy, you might be able to do more things than older people. Right. So um, when people are, when they come in for Corona and they, they stay for two weeks, right, to make sure that, you know, all the symptoms, they get the testing, they get all the care that they needed. But when they are, um, they are able to leave the hospital. Do you have any recommendations on how to, continue their safety or to not, <clears throat> sorry, get the virus again or give it to somebody else or? Well, the, the key thing is to, <clears throat> to be in contact with your primary care physician as you're leaving the hospital to have a yeah. follow-up. So we're doing telehealth appointments. So as patients are coming out of the hospital with COVID-19, we're communicating with them just to understand, you know, how they're feeling physically, but also understand like what their setup is at home and who's at home. Because a lot of times with my patients, I know their spouses, I know their other family members in the house. So we understand do they have the ability to isolate at home or do they have so many medical problems they need people taking care of them? You know, in a perfect world, you could put them in an isolated spot and have all their needs met, but people still need their family. So there's going to be some contact with other people. That is very true. It's very true. 
But um, that's all the questions that I had for you. You answered them perfectly. Thank you so much for that. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add or anything else you'd like to tell the public or any advice or anything along those lines? No, I think the key thing at this point is, yes, we have gotten past what we think is the worst part of this virus right now, but people still need to be vigilant. And if we let down our guard, this virus is going to come right back and cause the same problem again, which you want to avoid. So if you're unsure of what you want to do as far as being socially you know, interactive and being out there, if you're not sure, err on the side of you know, doing as little as possible and get as much information and reach out to your primaries because we are living this every day and we can give people the best guidance that they can get at this point. Thank you so much. Thank you and thanks for the time today. I'm Sarah Du and you're watching Brockton Community Access. That's true news coming to you. With the current epidemic, many people are left full of fear, uninformed, and lacking essential products to get through COVID-19. Today, I'll provide simple tips and advice to help keep you and your surrounding peers informed and safe. Since the CDC released an advisory, there's been a rush on produce, toilet paper, and cleaning supplies. Although stores are still open, people have been panic buying items in bulk to be prepared for the unknowing months to come. If you find yourself without cleaning supplies, there are a few products you can use to disinfect your hands in high touch places in your home. Another at-home mixture recommended by the CDC is adding five tablespoons of bleach or hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water into a spray bottle, which can act as a very effective disinfectant. These products are great substitutes and are key to keeping ourselves safe. In these overwhelming times, it's common to feel frightened or overwhelmed with negativity. But if we all act accordingly and follow the guidelines, we can get through this epidemic together. I'm Sarah Idu, and you're watching Brockton Community Access. Thank you and have a wonderful day.